Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. This week I'm going to be looking at a really common problem that I see in students when they need to use the fourth finger or pinky. If you've not been over to TalkingBase.net then be sure to check it out. There's over a hundred free lessons on the lesson map all categorised for ease of navigation. Also, if you subscribe for free, you'll gain access to a load of exclusive content including courses, ebooks, a forum and the practice room. So, go check it out. So, the problem that I'm going to be looking at involves movement from the fourth finger of the fretting hand and it always rears its ugly head when I have students playing a basic major scale pattern. So, if we look at a C major scale starting here at the 8th fret of the E string, we've got the following pattern. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Now, usually, it's fine in a sense. You know, the fingers just drop down and all's fine. But when we get to the top, the problem occurs on the turnaround. So when we're going, we're about to start descending again. So if you come up the major scale, and then come down, when you get to the top there, up to that top C, it's the movement from that fourth finger to the third finger that causes problems. And often what will happen is that the top C there ends up being a little, um, uh, sounds a little weaker because the fourth finger's weaker. Then when we go down to the B, it gets scuffed and just sounds horrible and the student usually moves down very quickly down to the A to get away from it. So it's the movement from the fourth finger there, the pinky, down to that third finger, the C to the B, okay? So before I show you the special exercise I've got for working on this, uh, let's just try working through that scale really, really slowly. And I want you to really concentrate on playing each and every note with perfect articulation and tone. I don't want rattle and half fretted notes. Everyone should sound exactly the same. So hold each note for the full duration and concentrate on pressing the third and the fourth fingers down nice and firm. Because those fingers are usually weaker, especially in beginner to intermediate players, you'll need to press with more force uh, to, uh, to get the same kind of t uh, tone and sound. So, if we start there at the C, very slowly, okay? So. Every note the same. Down again. Okay, so go as slow as you can there and just concentrate on every single note being perfect, okay? So just one more time. Full held duration. There's that third finger. So you should be able to hear and feel where some of those problems in that turnaround are. And you might also have issues with the fourth finger to the second finger, the G to the F on the A string. So really concentrate on every finger as you move up and down. They should all be consistent in volume and tone, okay? So because we've gone slowly with that, you'll probably be able to feel it a little bit better. You know, so as you get to the top there, you know, you'll be able to feel how weak that fourth finger is and how little control that you've got over it when you bring it up, you know, you raise the finger and then go for the third finger, okay? And because the third finger is quite weak in itself, uh, you know, for most people, especially at a lower level, that's why it causes such a problem, moving from the fourth finger to the third finger. So as you play that scale, just try to uh, be aware of that and just try to feel whether you have that problem. So just this week, I worked out a little exercise that helped two of my students that were suffering from this problem. And uh, I'll share that with you now. So I'm calling this exercise uh, finger press-ups, <laughs> okay, because of how they look when we do them. So to begin, let's just isolate that line and the movement there on the D string. So we're just going to be doing the same thing that we did in the major scale, okay? So we're going to begin with the first finger, third finger, and fourth finger there, A, B, C, all held down. So... 7th fret of the D string, 9th fret of the D string, and 10th uh, fret of the D string. 1st finger, 3rd finger, 4th finger, all held down. That's the starting position, okay? So then we play the C, okay? So we're playing that note at the 10th fret, and then we simply raise the finger and play the B, so at the 9th fret. So we're going 10th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret, 9th fret, you know, round and round, okay? So C, B, C, B, C, B. 
And you can see why I'm calling this a press up because the finger is coming up and down like that. Okay? So we're not aiming for speed, we're not aiming for de -de 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 -de. we just want normal speed there because we actually want the exercise to take longer. If you play it too fast, you know, you're not holding down as long. Okay, so that's the exercise. So this exercise isolates that movement between the fourth and the third finger and it builds strength and dexterity, okay? So uh, just like in regular exercise, you can actually try counting the number of these press-ups. You know, you can keep a, you know, try sets of them, okay? So uh, we'll start and we'll just try 30 repetitions, okay? So get in position and then one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, so that was one set of uh, 30 repetitions. If that seems really easy, then you could increase the number of uh, repetitions, and if it seems too difficult, then just do less. But the aim is to feel a pull in the hand. You know, no pain, just that muscular pull, so that, you know, the fingers feel like they've had a workout, they're pretty tired. And work out how many you can do, and that can become a, a regular practice figure. Now, you're obviously not going to have to do this over and over for years and years and years. It's just to build and warm up the fingers, you know, building up that dexterity and independence. And uh, once you've done a set, have a little rest, you know, shake the hands off, try another. Then have another rest, you know, rest for a few minutes, shake the hands off, then try another set. So it becomes a little, little like a, a proper physical workout. After playing through this exercise a few times, go back to playing that major scale that we were playing before and uh, you should feel a difference in that turnaround at the top when we're working back down through the notes. I was amazed at what difference it made with the students that I mentioned before. It's just because we're isolating that movement, you know, and we're really focusing with the exercise. So, you know, once you've tried playing the, you know, the exercise, just try up and down that C major again. When you get to that point where we're going C to B, you've already been practicing and focusing on that, that individual movement there. So when you get there, it's a very familiar movement, okay? And you should feel all warmed up and, you know, a lot better. You can also try exactly the same thing on the A string. So try holding down the, uh, the first, second and fourth fingers at the E, F and G there on the second line there on the A string. So, you know, it's, if we were to look at the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, there they are. We've got the first finger, second finger, fourth finger. Just try the same exercise. Hold all three fingers down. Play the G there. F, G, F, G, F. Perform the same press up exercise. Because every now and then that can also be a problem, you know, when you're coming down the scale, that fourth finger there down to the uh, down to the second finger, it's the same kind of thing. Not to the same extent that it, it is up here, um, it doesn't seem to be as problematic, but you know, for some people it can still be a little bit of a problem. So again, we're just isolating that movement and uh, focusing on it. As I've already mentioned, the key part of this exercise is the isolation, you know, isolating the movement. And it could be applied to any movement that you have problems with in any piece. So, you know, whenever you're having some trouble in whatever piece it is, whatever bass line or, you know, lead line, whatever it is, just find the part where it seems to be causing you problems and just isolate the, the movement between two fingers and just try working on that and uh, it'll probably help out. Now, also, you can try uh, creating another exercise that covers all the different finger permutations. So, you know, 
if, if you want to really take this to a, a different level, uh, you know, if you're really into these press-up exercises. So what we could do is uh, let's move on to the G string. And uh, all we'll do is we'll play, uh, put all the fingers down, one, two, three, four, from the seventh fret to the 10th fret. So first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. So we want to start with them all held down, okay? Seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th fret. Um, so we start there and then we can do press ups with the fourth and third finger. So this is the same exercise that we've just done, but we'll go through them all just to be exhaustive. So we start there, fourth finger, third finger, and you can perform that press up exercise with those two fingers, fourth and the third, okay? And you can do the sets and whatever. Then we could try going down from the uh, fourth finger to the second finger, okay? So four, two, four, two. So this is the same as the one that we did on the A string. You know, and just, you know, do the sets, whatever. Then we go fourth finger, first finger. So 10th fret, uh, seventh fret. Exactly the same exercise, but with those two fingers, four and one, okay? So that's three different exercises there, starting on the fourth finger. Four and three, four and two, and four and one. Then you can start on the third finger. So for this, we could have three and two, or three and one. Again, you just do the press-up exercises. And then finally, we could try just with two and one, okay? So second finger, first finger. So eighth fret, seventh fret. And you'll probably find that you don't really need to, you know, work on those two fingers because they're usually a lot stronger. But, you know, just to be exhaustive and comprehensive, to go through all of them, they're all there. So that's just a, an example of how we can take that and, you know, just work through it with every finger. And if you really want to take it even further than that, then you could try those exercises on different strings because obviously position is slightly different with the hand and uh, the strings are a little bit thicker. So if we were to try it on the D string, A string or E string, we could try it on the E string there just as a, you know, to um, take it to the other extreme. Then we've got the fourth finger to the third finger or the fourth finger to the second finger or the fourth finger to the first finger, etc. Okay, so there's a lot of things you can do with this, but you, that's the general idea of the, uh, of the exercise. So obviously, this is a bit of a mindless exercise and it's no substitute for real practice, but uh, these press-ups can really help as a warm-up and uh, the isolation side of them is really good for improving your finger independence and dexterity. The fact that you can keep count of how many reps and sets that you've done can make it, you know, a little bit more interesting and it can give you little aims and goals. For instance, you could set out, you know, with the aim of doing three sets of 100 reps. Okay, so little goals. But like I said, it's no substitute for real practice. It's just a supplement and it's something that you can do while watching TV. But uh, just give it a try and see if it can help with any of those descending scale patterns. Okay, see you later.